good morning hello everybody welcome to activate her with me sally goodwin and to this week's episode of wisdom wednesdays wisdom wednesdays yes just reminding myself what day it is really <laughs> wisdom wednesdays and to this fabulous community this gorgeous family this absolutely wonderful tribe of people known as the church without walls so welcome 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 on this beautiful beautiful wednesday morning cold in cape town <laughs> it is winter <laughs> And um, it has been raining, but um, apparently the weather's going to get a bit better. I'm not sure about that, but uh, I'm off to Durban this weekend and uh, the weather there apparently is a lot better. So I'm quite looking forward to that. So welcome everybody. So good to see you on this Wednesday morning, this, uh, this beautiful Wednesday morning. And... Um, Bright and early. Good morning, amazing Anthea. Welcome, my lovely. And uh, I was just actually saying to my husband that um, as it gets lighter in the mornings, <laughs> bonjour, Brigitte. Welcome, my darling. As it gets lighter in the mornings, um, I will be more, I will be coming on close to seven o'clock because it gets a little bit easier to to wake up um, not to wake up but to get up you know it gets a, it's a little bit easier to get up um as it gets more summery but also um uh where are you going to be in durban i actually have no idea i think westbrook or Westfall, or something like that. I, I have no idea. Good morning, and they're all the way from, from J Bay. Lovely Lindy, special Sylvia, amazing Alida. Good morning, Radiant Roz, my special Seb's friend. Did some Piwe tell you how we welcomed her at the event on Saturday? And I hope she felt like part of the family and part of our crazy tribe good morning incredible Erna welcome first time live oh my word can we just celebrate that for a moment ladies and gentlemen um Erna amazing Erna is live first for the first time on the live it it could be Westville it's either Westville or Westbrook something like that I I don't know I just know that I'm being fetched from the airport and taken to wherever I'm going I I actually haven't really asked very many questions can we just take a moment can we take a moment good morning mama tessa have a wonderful day at work my darling and we will be excited to hear from you later um, can we take a moment to appreciate these beautiful earrings can we just can you see them these absolutely gorgeous earrings and they came with this is this not divine is this not just divine this gorgeous necklace from my special sylvia friend so thank you so much my darling sylvia i so appreciate you oh, i'm so glad she did sebs i'm so glad she enjoyed herself i wish i'd gotten to chat to her more but it was crazy good morning magnificent michelle mighty melanie good <laughs> sylvia i love you to bits my darling <laughs> Colleen, my darling friend, welcome, welcome. I know you always watch, but you don't not always able to be on the live. Um, yes, uh, terrific, Tishka. Oh, Tishka, I haven't replied to your message yet, but the answer is yes. Um, so yes, yes, that will all be fine. Good morning, Stu. So good to see you this morning. Oh, you see, I speak to Tishka and immediately I start rhyming. Nurturing Nolene, welcome, my darling, lovely Lynette. Oh, it is so good. Aren't they gorgeous? They are so gorgeous. And I still need to showcase the beautiful earrings that Tishka gave me. Absolutely gorgeous as well. Uh, ladies, I have had to order a um, special jewelry case to put... Um, my jewelry in to go to scotland and to england so that i can carry all of these amazing earrings with me and show the the uk what what jewelry actually looks like <laughs> good morning wonderful wendy good to have you on the live this morning my darling i know that it's not always possible for you <laughs> yes no i do have an outfit that works i think it's just a little bit cold for it <laughs> 
<laughs> so when it gets a little bit warmer, it's I, I always I warm up preaching because as I teach and preach, you know, the anointing just comes and then I get hotter and hotter and hotter. But I start off quite cold. So I'm sort of, you know, put on the warm stuff and then afterwards think, oh my goodness, I should have actually. Good morning, Natasha, my darling. So Natasha is a friend of mine from years ago and we connected years ago. We had coffee together and then we just lost touch and didn't see or speak to each other for absolutely ages. Us. And now we have reconnected again and she came to the event on Saturday and it's just so exciting, so exciting to connect with beautiful friends that you haven't seen for a while. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Anthea. I know that you appreciate this sort of thing, you know, I'm sure lots of you do, but but amazing Anthea because she's a model, you know, um, she appreciates it uh, a well put together um, outfit with the correct earrings and shoes and things. Um, she has a, an in-depth appreciation for it just because of who she is. So when you compliment me, Anthea, then I know that I'm getting it right. Because <laughs> Anthea always looks like totally put together. And in fact, I had coffee with Anthea the other day and some woman stopped and said to Anthea, some complete stranger, a couple, complete strangers, complete strangers, stopped and the woman said to Anthea, um, you are such an example of an elegant woman or something like that. I mean, she just like, she just, she was so so effusive in her um in her praise of how Anthea looked and you know all of that. I was just like, oh my word! You see, this is what it's like when you sit with these beautiful people. So um oh, and then before I forget, a beautiful Brigitte would like me to thank you on her behalf. She would like me to thank our gorgeous Radiant Ros and our tribe, our community for how we all welcomed her, for how you all loved on her, for how you all made her feel so at home and just poured your love and your support and your prayers out on her. Good morning, famous Chantal. Um, on Saturday, she just, she sent me a message and she said, well, I please thank all the ladies on the live for everything, for just for pouring themselves out over her. And um, she, she w and especially Roz, who was particularly she stayed with Roz and Roz, you know, fetched and carried her. Beautiful Berenice, welcome, my lovely. And um, and so she just wanted to say thank you. She she felt the love. And is that not what we want? We want people to feel the love. Like some Piwe, we wanted her to feel the love. And Brigitte, we wanted her to feel the love. And Tishka, we wanted her to feel the love. You know, they've only got to feel the love online. We wanted them to feel the love in person. And, um, and Brigitte definitely did that. So thank you so much to all of you for the way you just are as a community, as a tribe, the way you just pour yourselves out on people, you don't hold back and you love well, well done for loving well, because isn't that the first and the greatest um, commandment that God gives us? The first commandment is to love um, him above everything else. And the second commandment is to love everyone else. So, um, so well done for that. Honestly, ladies, um, you were absolutely amazing. You really were amazing. And then very quickly as well, please, if you have put your name down, we have some people who have put their names down for the retreat, which is the last weekend in August. Ladies, those of you who, um, those of you who attended the retreat last year can testify to how life changing it was. Honestly, those of you who attended the retreat last year can testify to how life-changing it was. I will be teaching from my books. Good morning, special Simone. Oh, thank you, my darling Roz. New friends, hey, isn't that what the kingdom is all about? New sisters, new brothers, new friends. Um, so I will be teaching from my books. Gorgeous Mariska, who you know is just the most talented person, will be giving a Bible journaling workshop. And can I tell you, it is amazing. It really is. Um, I, you, we will, we are going to have worship. We are going to worship together. We're going to eat together. We're going to, and the price that you pay for the retreat, the price that you pay includes everything, your stay, your food, 
your coffee, your tea, your everything. And it's in Wellington, so it's not very far from Cape Town. And um, But some people have put their names down and they haven't paid anything yet. And if you have put your name down, but you're not going to come anymore, we need to know because we need to then give other ladies those spaces. So please would you, um, please would you get hold of Marlise um, or Mariska, tell them, you know, there we go. Anthea, Anthea made lifelong friends at the retreat last year. Anthea and Candace and Taryn drove together, never knew each other, came to the retreat, literally organized that they shared a room and they have stayed um, warriors for each other and lifelong friends since, lifelong friends since then. So the, it's life changing, not because of me or Marlies or Mariska, but because of God and because what, of what he's doing at the moment amongst women. And so, um, so please put your name down. If you want to come, but you need a sponsor, let's let Marlies or Mariska know, and we are going to pray, um, for sponsors, you know, but, but put your, Put your name down, um, and if you have put your name down and you do need to pay, then please pay so that we so that you reserve your space. I, at least pay something, even if you can't pay the whole amount immediately and you're waiting for payday at the end of August, which I totally get. I totally get. Um, please just pay something, um, just to secure your place. Okay. So and then we have a few spaces left. So tell your friends, bring your daughters, or if you don't feel like bringing your daughters because you want to just be able to relax, bring a friend you know bring bring someone but let's get as many women there as possible so that they can experience what it is like to be at a retreat that is just filled with love it is a not a no judgment space it is a space of complete freedom complete liberation and just an incredible space all around good morning delightful Danette. so please please um put your names down tell us if you need a sponsor um, if you if you can afford to sponsor somebody, please get in touch with me. Let me know if you can afford to sponsor somebody because we do have ladies who um, are desperate to come and they they just don't have the finances and they're looking for a sponsor. But um, otherwise, please just good morning, amazing Anisha, welcome, my darling. Okay, so 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 so, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> let us just take a moment <laughs> because this morning I want to continue. So, you know, God is for those of you who have noticed um, when I've been praying, I'm trying not to somehow or other because I get very, um, you know, um, I'm a bit dramatic and very gestury when I speak. Um, when I've glimpsed because I don't watch my own videos, but when I've glimpsed kind of bits of the videos, wonderful, Volna, welcome. Um, afterwards, I keep going backwards and forwards like this, like I'm rocking. And I just, I'm trying not to do that. Okay, I'm trying not to do that. Terrific, Tamsin. Thank you, my darling. I know I need to get more things in this color. It's such a divine color. So, but we have been, we started, should I say, having a look at the, uh, the names of God, and we literally, good morning, special Sumi, and welcome to that precious baby, your two precious babies, should I say. Um, we have been sort of looking at the names of God, but we got as far as um, Yahweh Sabaoth, gorgeous curl, welcome, and then obviously God, you know, was speaking about other things, but I do feel that we need there's something on the names of God and it's because um it is because of that prophetic word God gave me that I've spoken of here before that God is coming this move of God's that he is doing he is coming in the fullness of the trinity he is coming as father son and holy spirit all together, the fullness of the Trinity, the full weight of his glory, the full weightiness of his glory. And, and just, you know, I think on Saturday and at some of our other events, we have experienced a a portion of that. We haven't experienced the fullness of it yet because I firmly believe that when we experience the fullness of it, we are going to be flat on our faces. We won't be able to stand. When we experience the full weight of the glory of God and everything in his, 
nature and in his personality, all the facets of his nature, all the facets of his personality. When we experience that, we literally, I feel like we won't be able to stand under the weight of that glory. Okay, absolutely, my gorgeous. Dear Alison, I'm just releasing boldness and courage over you right now in the name of Jesus, releasing boldness and courage over you right now in the name of Jesus. And I'm just removing that fear of authority in Jesus name. I just remove that fear of man and I remove that fear of authority in the name of Jesus. And I just, I just ask God to surround you with his perfect love, to surround you with his tangible presence and that you will be so filled with fire, so filled with boldness, so filled with courage that you won't even recognize recognize yourself in Jesus name in Jesus name good morning my gorgeous Claudia friend so so the name that we're going to look at this morning is a name that you have heard before um, it is a name because some of the names that we will look at are names that um, <laughs> are names that we, we we've never heard you know they I think even when we spoke about um, Yahweh Kharev uh, there were quite a few people who'd never heard of never heard of Yahweh Kharev or the Lord our sword you know but this is a name that you will all know and this name appears for the very first time. For the very first time, I will show you where it appears for the very first time. In Genesis chapter 17. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. Okay, Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. Good morning, significant Stacy Lee. Welcome this morning. So good to see you. Genesis 17, verse 1. When Abram, so he was still Abram, he wasn't Abraham yet. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the Almighty God. Walk and live habitually before me and be perfect, blameless, wholehearted, complete. And I will make my covenant, my solemn pledge between me and you, and will multiply you exceedingly. And it's right after this, right after God reveals himself in our English translation as the Almighty God, that God then puts the H, he changes Abraham's name, he changes Sarah's name to Abraham and Sarah, puts the H's in their names, the, the hey, the hey that is in his very name, yot hey vav hey, which spells Yahweh. So the hey that is in his very name, he breathes it into Abraham's name, into Sarah's name. Um, can you hear the hey? And with that hey, they then become able to produce able to produce Isaac. And it doesn't happen immediately, but it does eventually happen. So this is, but and so in our Bible translation, in our English translation, it says, I am the almighty God or a version of that. And that is the name El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Shaddai. And we, whatever you're all facing this week, this is then this teaching is very necessary for you. Good morning, mighty Machta. This teaching is very necessary for you because El Shaddai, we, it is translated as Almighty God, but it is so much more than that. It means so much more than that. So here God, so this is what God does for all of us, okay? And this is what he is doing for us in this time. As he comes in the fullness of his Trinity, he is going to introduce us to all the different facets of his nature. And all the different facets of his nature are encompassed in his different names, 70 odd different names. And bearing in mind that this is, I'm not not teaching about Jesus because God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are the three in one. And if they are coming in the fullness of the Trinity, then all of these names apply to all three of the elements of the Trinity, to Father God, to Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, to Yahweh, to Yeshua, and to Ruach, okay? So the fullness of the Trinity is the fullness of what all three of them carry. All three of them carry together, and thus these names apply to all of them, 
to the three of them together as the Trinity. And the only way we are going to be able to receive the fullness of the Trinity is to get to know the different facets of the nature of God. And true to humankind, there are some facets of God's nature that we enjoy, you know, his love, his grace, his mercy, his loving kindness, um, all of that kind of thing, you know, the salvation, redemption, restoration, restitution, you know, those are all facets of God's nature that we enjoy. Those are all facets of God's nature that we embrace. But God is also, you know, judge. He's also king. He's also Lord of all. He also chastises. He disciplines. He rebukes. He reproves. You know, he does all of, he punishes um, the evildoers. He does all of those things as well. And those are some of the facets of his, his nature that we don't really like to um, fully grasp. We prefer to just ignore those ones. But also, if we don't understand, if we don't understand the, the, what the names actually mean, because in some instances, our translations just for our English translations just fall horribly short in actually fully encompassing what that name means. So what we read in Genesis 17 verse 1 is that Abraham was 99 years old and the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the Almighty God. And when we read that, we don't always know that that is the very first time that God reveals himself as El Shaddai, where God says to him, I am to Abram, I am El Shaddai. Good morning, terrific Tammy. I am El Shaddai, beautiful birth and no apologies necessary. And then he goes and makes a covenant with him. So this is what happens, ladies and gentlemen, as God reveals his different names to us. And this is why we are going to take this journey for as long as we need to take it. OK, because 70 odd names will take a while to get through. But what I want you to understand is that every time you tangibly encounter God, as in, in, in a new facet of his personality, when he reveals a new name of himself to you. Good morning, Radiant Rachel. He enters into a deeper form of covenant with you. If you read through the Bible, so we covenant with God, okay, when we surrender our lives to him, when we allow him to become Lord of our lives, Lord of our hearts, when we say to him, you can have everything, you know, this is all for you, we enter into a covenant with him. But just like in Ezekiel, you could go into the water ankle deep, you could go into the water knee deep, you could go into the water thigh deep, or you could go into the water until it was, you felt like you were drowning. It's the same with our relationship with the Lord. We can have a kind of surface, superficial relationship with the Lord that doesn't really go any further than, you know, salvation and kind of nominally being able to call yourself a Christian. Or you can covenant with God deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and find the more and the more and the more of him and get deeper and deeper into him. And it, it requires an exchange. Covenant requires an exchange because a covenant is a two-way thing. God covenants with us, absolutely, and he never breaks his covenant. But we then covenant with him. We're not always as good as keeping covenant, but we, we do covenant with him. And whenever God introduces himself in the Bible as a new name that we don't always pick up on because of our English translation, when God introduces himself by a new name, he is introducing a new level of covenant covenant. Every time he said to the Israelites, I am a Yahweh Jireh, I am your provider. That was a new level of covenant. When he introduced himself as Yahweh Nisi, God your healer, that was a new covenant. Not a new covenant in terms of go with the old one and bring, but a deeper, going deeper and deeper into covenant with the Israelites as he, as he revealed himself to them. Because if God revealed himself to us all in one go, we would probably just die because it would just be too much for us to cope with. But just like with the Israelites, God revealed himself to them, you know, name by name, by name, by name, each time deepening his covenant with them, each time revealing another facet of his nature, each time revealing another piece of his glory, another piece of his glory, each time until the, 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 
the aim was that they would eventually know the fullness of God, the fullness of his glory, the fullness of his nature. But unfortunately, they kept doubting the names that he had already revealed to them. And then they didn't receive the Messiah when the Messiah came in the fullness of all of those names. So it just, you know... So we need to receive all of this, but sometimes it is difficult to receive it because we don't know the Hebrew. We only read the English. So we just read, oh, almighty God. And we think, oh, yes, your God is almighty. You know, God is almighty. And then he made the covenant and then he, you know, gave Abram the promise. And because it's also a story we've heard many times, we don't necessarily pay too much attention to it because we've heard it so many times. We've you know, it's been preached so many times, the story of Abram and the covenant of Isaac and all of that. And some of the details just go straight over our heads. But the name Shaddai, the name Shaddai means so much more than just almighty God. Almighty God is enough. I mean, almighty God, that is enough. It's amazing. But if you, if you are covenanting with Almighty God, if Almighty God is tangibly encountering you, like all of you who are facing things this week, like Joe Allison needing um, courage, boldness and courage, if Almighty God is encountering Joe Allison, is encountering all of you wherever you are, don't you want to know the fullness of what that encounter should look like? Don't you want to know what that almighty God actually means when he comes to you as El Shaddai? What does El Shaddai actually mean? And because I think it would just be so much more, so much more impactful, so much more life-changing, so much more exciting, so much more revelatory, if we knew the fullness of the name of God that we were actually encountering. So this is what Shaddai means. This is what Shaddai means. So El means God. And this is what Shaddai means. Shaddai. I actually want to cry. <laughs> Just the emotion. Listen to these words. Listen to what El Shaddai means. The first meaning of El Shaddai means my destroyer, my destroyer. Doesn't that sound scary? I suppose you could say scary because, but note those words, my destroyer. In other words, God comes as your destroyer to take out, to take on, to destroy the plans of the enemy. That those weapons who, that are formed against you, God is the one who comes and destroys them. God is the one who steps into the breach as your destroyer. Now, we don't like to think of God in those terms. We don't like to think, you know, of, of God in the, in the terms of being a destroyer. Because it just seems, you know, the whole kind of gentle Jesus, meek and mild that we've been taught over the years, that just seems a bit harsh. But that's what I'm saying. How, to, how can we have courage and faith in a God th that is so mighty and so incredible and has so many different facets to his name, to one of his names? If we don't understand and grasp that God doesn't want to destroy you, he doesn't want to destroy his beautiful daughter or his gorgeous son who has surrendered their lives to him and just wants to be a part of him and just sacrificing everything for him and whose heart is postured in worship towards him. He doesn't want to destroy that one, but he wants to destroy the one that comes against you. He wants to destroy the plans of the enemy. He wants to destroy the assignments of the enemy that to come against you. And so when you say, I receive you, my El Shaddai, you are saying, I receive you, almighty God, my destroyer, fighting in my corner. I just, I get this, I just find this so enormously exciting. I really hope that you do. But so, so the, the fact that El Shaddai has been translated as almighty God is actually it's actually in, you know, 
back in the day uh, when the Bible was translated and before we fully understood the ancient Hebrew, the ancient Greek. And we need to remember as well that the Bible, you know, has been translated by various people over various times with various um, agendas. Not that there's an agenda in putting forward the name of God, but it's, you know, that, that's why we do this. That's why we look deeper into the things of God. So um, what Jewish scholars say is that the, the name El Shaddai was translated as Almighty God more out of enthusiasm than out of sound etymology. It's not actually sound etymology. It was just out of enthusiasm because they couldn't find an, another name that encompassed El Shaddai because they just wanted to put one thing, you know, so they, they didn't want to put all of these names, so they couldn't find a name that encompasses, so they just put Almighty God, but it doesn't give us the fullness, it doesn't give us the fullness, and obviously, um, Jewish scholars look at this from an ancient Hebrew perspective, from an Aramaic perspective. They look at the root word of Shaddai. They look at where the word came out of, because in Hebrew, that's very important. The root word, the word that comes from a root word carries with it the, the meanings of that root word. So it becomes a word that means something of its own, but it carries with it all the meaning of this root word. That is, that's how Hebrew works. And so that's why our English just doesn't quite get to it all the time. So the first one is my destroyer. My destroyer, just absolutely the most amazing, the, the most amazing thing. And um, so in, in Isaiah 13 verse 6, just in case, just in case you, you are thinking, no, but that can't be the nature of God to be a destroyer. In Isaiah 13 verse 6, 13 verse 6, this is what it says in Isaiah 13 verse 6. Wail, wail, for the day of the Lord is at hand as destruction from the Almighty. And if you're reading from the Amplified, as destruction from the Almighty and sufficient one, Shaddai, will it come. And then it cross-references Genesis 17 verse 1, which is the very first time that Almighty God or El Shaddai is used. So listen to this. Listen to this again. Wail, for the day of the Lord is at hand as destruction from the Almighty and sufficient one, Shaddai, will it come. So what is, what is Isaiah saying? He's saying over Babylon, well, because the day of the Lord is at hand and it's going to come through destruction. El Shaddai, the Lord, my destroyer. So God does destroy. We know that. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and Jesus came and we under a new covenant and there's salvation and repentance, etc. And we all understand that, but that doesn't take away from who God is. And one day he's going to destroy all evil. And we are all going to celebrate that. We are all going to celebrate that, aren't we? So we want him to be a destroyer, don't we? Because we want him to be able to destroy the enemy and to destroy evil. So he is El Shaddai, my destroyer. That is the one. That is the one meaning. Then, then it means. Uh, this one that the Amplified also mentions, sufficient, my sufficiency, El Shaddai, my sufficiency. He is destroyer and he is sufficient. In other words, he is enough. He is all we need. He is El Shaddai. He is our sufficiency. All we need is El Shaddai, our sufficiency, that he is sufficient for us. He is sufficient for us. The next, the next meaning of the name Shaddai is this. My protective spirit. So can you see that? Can you see that as in the Holy Spirit part of the Trinity? My protective spirit. So here he is, El Shaddai. El Shaddai, he is God, he is almighty God. He is God, my destroyer. He is God, my sufficiency. He is God, my protective spirit. 
Can you see how Father, Son, and Spirit are all in that name? Can you see that? Can you see that my destroyer, Father God, my protective spirit, Holy Spirit, my sufficiency, Jesus was sufficient. He was a sufficient sacrifice. He was all that was needed. He was sufficient. El Shaddai, my destroyer, my protective spirit, my sufficiency. All of that encompassed in this one name that we translate as Almighty God because we can't find any other words for it. Because we don't know how else in English to put words to that, to that incredible name. But that's who he is. And it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. It is also translated, and I just want to find where I put my notes about it can also be translated as L of the mountain, L of the gathering. L of the mountain, L of the gathering. God of the mountain, God of the gathering. He is God of the gathering. He is God of our gatherings. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, whether we gather online, whether we gather in person, whether we gather at prophetic school, whether we gather at events, He is God of our gatherings. He is God of our gatherings and he is God of the mountain. So if he is God of the mountain, then whatever mountain is standing in your way cannot stand there for long because El Shaddai is God of the mountain. God of the mountain, God of the gathering. He is El Shaddai. And so that mountain has to be made flat because El Shaddai is God of the mountain. And he is the one. That if you have a mustard seed of faith, can remove that mountain for you. Just amazing. Just amazing. I don't know if any of you find this amazing, but I just find this so, so, so amazing. So the, um, the personal, the protective spirit. Yes, the protective spirit I spoke about already. And then there was something else here. Psalm 8 verse 5. Psalm 8 verse 5. This is another an example of his sufficiency. Psalm 8 verse 5. Psalm 8 verse 5. Right. So it means sufficiency. El Shaddai. Shaddai means sufficiency. And it also means self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. And so he says in Psalm 8 verse 5. And this is. This is um, a psalm where, where uh, Jesus or God is talking about man, right? Yet, because in, in Psalm 8 verse 4, it says, What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of earthborn man that you care for him? And then verse 5, Yet you have made him, but a little lower than God, or heavenly beings, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him sufficient, a little bit lower than God or heavenly beings, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. You have put all things under his feet. All things. All things. No more tearing down strongholds from up here somewhere. All things are under our feet. It says that in Psalm 8. All things are under our feet. When we tangibly encounter El Shaddai, not only is God, El Shaddai, sufficient, but he in us makes us sufficient. So for all those of us who struggle with not being enough, for all those of us who worry that we're not enough or we are not sufficient, God, El Shaddai, when we encounter him, El Shaddai, he, we become sufficient because of our, the sufficiency of our God. The sufficiency of our God makes us sufficient. Can, do you see that? Do you understand how that works? How in Psalm 8, God is saying, man is sufficient. I have given him dominion, all things are under his feet. But why is he sufficient? He is sufficient because I am Al Shaddai. I, my name is sufficiency. And as long as you have me, I am sufficiency. And therefore you are sufficient for what you need to do. Just amazing. It's just amazing. It just blows my mind. <clears throat> the other meaning of the word, of the word Shaddai, the word for um, God, the name for God, is 
and this remember we're translating from the Hebrew, um, is who is abundantly. El Shaddai, the God who is abundantly. Notice there, it doesn't say the God who was abundant, the God who will be abundant. It's present continuous tense. El Shaddai, the God who is abundantly. He is abundantly and he continues to be abundantly. He has always been abundantly and he will always be abundantly. El Shaddai, the God who is abundantly. And that we get to receive that. So not so when we hear the word sufficient, we sometimes in our English language think, okay, that means that God is sufficient. You know, he will supply all my needs, just enough, just enough that I need. But no, God is sufficient for us. And through God, we are sufficient in him. But he is also encompassed in the same name, the God who is abundantly. So there is an abundance in our sufficiency. God just doesn't just deal out small, meager little portions. For Jo Allison, for example, and I'm using her as an example this morning. Sorry, my lovely. But for Jo Allison, for example, God isn't going to give her just enough boldness and just enough courage that she gets to say what she needs to say in whatever situation she's facing. God is a God of sufficiency. He is sufficient, you are sufficient in him, but he is also the God who is abundantly. So that boldness and that courage and that lack of fear comes in abundance to you and makes you even more sufficient. Does that make sense to you? Are you tracking this with me? It makes you even more sufficient. We, some, we have, you know, over the years, English language and the way words are used has changed slightly. And sometimes words mean something to us, but they didn't. It's not what they meant then. And so it is this, the sufficiency, the sufficiency of God makes us sufficient. But sufficient doesn't mean just enough. You know, we're not just enough. God doesn't do anything in just enough. God is a God who is abundantly right now with you, with me, through you, through me. God is abundantly. El Shaddai. He is abundantly. And the last one, the last meaning, the last meaning of the name Shaddai is my rainmaker. My rainmaker. Is that not just so powerful? My rainmaker. I mean, you know, you hear that, that those words used in, uh, in, sorry, I'm just finding, I'm trying to put my notes on my computer instead of in my book. And I just should actually just use my book because I'm clearly not technologically advanced enough for this. But so the, I'm just trying to find my notes on the rainmaker, self-sufficient. Da, da, da. Yes. So um, in Genesis 2 verse 6 and 7 verse 12, in Genesis 2 verse 6. So what, 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 what I'm t telling you when I read you these verses is that in these verses that I'm quoting to you, the name Shaddai is used or the word Shaddai is used in the ancient Hebrew, in the ancient Hebrew. So it, it, it doesn't read like that in our English, but it reads like that in the ancient Hebrew. So Genesis, what did I say? Genesis 2 verse 6, 2 verse 6. It says, but there went up a mist, a fog, a vapor from the land and watered the whole surface, the whole surface of the ground. And that in that verse, in the ancient Hebrew, it alludes to God as being El Shaddai, the rainmaker, my rainmaker, the earth's rainmaker, because then there was no rain. Remember, rain only started with Noah and the flood. Up until Noah built the ark, the water came up from the ground and watered the earth, caused a mist or a vapor and watered the earth. There had never been rain. There had never been rain. Yet until Noah, it rained for the very first time. 
So God was known as the rainmaker in our language, the rainmaker, because he was the one that caused the water to come out of the earth and water the earth so that man didn't actually need to water the earth because there was no man yet to do so. There was no man yet to do so. So Genesis 7 verse 12, Genesis 7 verse 12, 7 verse 12. And it rained upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And that is the very first time that it rained. And within the compass of those um, of the ancient Hebrew used, the name of El Shaddai was suggested in there as God, my rainmaker, as God, my rainmaker. Now, you know how there are prophetic words and there and, um, it, you know, in scripture, it talks about the latter rains being greater than the former, the latter rains being greater than the former. So the concept of that you can literally read in Genesis because the former rains was just the mist or the vapor that came up from the earth and watered the earth and the latter rains in this context was the rain that fell when Noah built the ark. The, lat the former rains and the latter rains in this simple context, you can see the understanding of those, the former rains and the latter rains. And then that was obviously used in other contexts throughout and we use it in other contexts prophetically. But how about this? How about that this is the first time that we are getting to understand the, the names of God correctly and this is the first time that we have heard that El Shaddai means God, my rainmaker. God, my rainmaker. And as we tangibly encounter El Shaddai as my rainmaker, then indeed our latter rains will be greater than our former rains. Because for the first time in our lives, we are actually encountering and acknowledging and understanding what the name Shaddai means. What the name Shaddai means, that El Shaddai, yes, it means almighty God, but it means so much more than that. And we don't get all, we don't get uh, more than that because we don't understand the ancient Hebrew. But if you do and you read and you pay attention to the ancient Hebrew, it is El Shaddai, almighty God, El Shaddai, my destroyer, El Shaddai, my protective spirit. El Shaddai, my rainmaker. El Shaddai, my sufficiency. El Shaddai, who is abundantly. All of those things are encompassed in this one name of God. This one name of God, El Shaddai. And I can take you into, you know, the roots and where that comes from and that, you know, that... um the, you know, the, this root comes from this word and the, you know, the verb um, shadad, shadad means to deal violently with ruin or destroy. And then there's a noun shad and that means have our violence or devastation. And so there comes shadai from that. But it's all um, quite um, long and involved and not um, particularly interesting to explain and difficult as well to explain without being able to write the words on something and, and, and show them to you. But, uh, but the thing is that the, all of these names, even, even the name, you know, my protective spirit, we know that God is our protector, right? I mean, we know that he's our protector, but that name, my protective spirit might, you know, um, if, ruffle a few people's feathers. But if you go to, if you go to, if you go to, if you go to, where is it now? Uh, okay, now I've lost it. There's a verse in Acts. Here, yeah, let's look in the New Testament. Matthew 18, verse 10. Matthew 18, verse 10. And obviously then this is also looking at the Greek as well. So Matthew 18, verse 10. Um, Beware that you do not despise or feel scornful towards or think little of one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels always are in the presence of and look upon the face of my father who is in heaven. So that has been that has been 
translated as the face of my father because the father in our English in our translations brings forth the the protection right the protective spirit but that would have been you the, the Greek or the ancient Hebrew if Jesus was quoting the ancient Hebrew would have been El Shaddai Shaddai my protective spirit the father in heaven who is protecting us plus the the angels that are in the presence of this father who are also protecting these little ones and then again, there is another verse in Acts, uh, in Acts 12, verse 15. Acts 12, verse 15. They said to her, you, oh, this is when Peter, when Peter comes to the door. When Peter comes to the door and the, 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 the servant girl doesn't realize that it's Peter and she goes, runs back and she says, um, oh, um, it's Peter and he was supposed to be in prison and they say she's crazy and then the, and then he continues to knock and in verse 15 they said to her you are crazy but she persistently and strongly and confidently affirmed that it was the truth they said it is his angel it is his angel again this concept of a protective spirit it can be a concept of a protective spirit the spirit of God protecting us and it can also be the concept of protective spirits as in the angelic beings the heavenly beings that also protect us and also walk with us and also go walk a road with us. So this is it, ladies and gentlemen. I am decreeing and declaring an encounter with El Shaddai over you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I trust that you will listen to this teaching as many times as you need to, to fully grasp and fully get right down into your spirit the actual meanings of the name Shaddai, that it is definitely our almighty God because Almighty encompasses everything but Almighty doesn't explain what it exactly means but that when you say El Shaddai when you worship El Shaddai when you when you pray El Shaddai you are praying to God my destroyer not the God who destroys me, the God who destroys the enemy, the God who destroys the assignments of the enemy, the God who destroys the weapons formed against me. Because if he is the one who created them, then he is the one that can destroy them. So El Shaddai, my destroyer, El Shaddai, my protective spirit, I have protection in the name of my God, my almighty God. I get to hide under his wings. I get to run into his mighty fortress. I get to have angels and heavenly beings whose job it is commanded by El Shaddai to protect me, to walk with me, to go with me. El Shaddai, my protective spirit. El Shaddai, my rainmaker, my rainmaker, that when I fully encounter El Shaddai as my rainmaker, I then understand how the latter rains will be better than the former rains because in the in the time of the former rains I didn't understand who El Shaddai was but it is now the time of the latter rains and I have tangibly encountered El Shaddai as my rainmaker and so I therefore know what it is like I therefore have an understanding of the latter rains being greater because I now understand and get to, are getting to know that facet of my God's personality as my rainmaker and then, El Shaddai, my sufficiency, El Shaddai, my sufficiency, not only is my almighty God sufficient for me, completely sufficient for me, but when I am in him, I am sufficient. So he is my sufficiency in that he is sufficient for me and he makes me sufficient for him. He makes me sufficient for him. Through him, I am sufficient. Always, in whatever situation, in whatever circumstance, in whatever space, through him who is my sufficiency, I am sufficient. And then we have El Shaddai, who is abundantly. God doesn't just give a little bit here and a little bit there. And, oh, you just need the one slice of bread. Here's just the one slice of bread. No, God is the God who is abundantly. He is the God who multiplies. He is the God who turned five loaves and two fishes into a feast that could feed over 5,000 people. He is the God who is abundantly. He has always been abundantly. He will always be abundantly. And he is abundantly right now in our present moment and we might not be feeling that abundance but maybe that is because we have not encountered El Shaddai 
our God who is abundantly. And we need to encounter El Shaddai, our God who is abundantly, and we need to fully, fully, fully grasp this facet of his nature, this facet of his personality, this facet of who he is as the Trinity, so that we can then see the abundance in our sufficiency. So if God is who is abundantly and we are in him, then we are also abundantly, abundantly, present continuous tense, not past tense, not future tense, present continuous tense. So I am just releasing, I decree and declare as a prophet in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and declare that it is your time. Every person who listens to this message, please like and share this word. Please like and share this word. That it is your time to tangibly encounter El Shaddai. That you have sung his name previously. You have spoken his name previously. You have used his name previously, but without a full understanding of what Shaddai means. So yes, amen, Jesus. El Shaddai means almighty God, but El Shaddai also means my destroyer. El Shaddai also means my protective spirit. El Shaddai also means my rainmaker. El Shaddai also means my sufficiency and El Shaddai also means my God who is abundantly. My God who is abundantly. So when we pray El Shaddai, when we worship El Shaddai, we are not just praying to Almighty God in the way we understand it in our English. Yes, he's Lord of Lords, King of Kings. All of these meanings are encompassed in that name and we don't know them because we haven't ever heard them preached or heard them spoken about. So we get to it, but when we have an understanding in our minds and in our hearts and in our spirits of the meanings of the name Shaddai, we get to encounter, we get to covenant with El Shaddai. We get to say, Lord God, I now know everything that Shaddai means, and I get to covenant with you as El Shaddai, covenant with me, Lord God, covenant with me as El Shaddai. And then you just see what God does because he, it's a relationship. He wants you to know him. He wants you to know him like he knows you. And it's a two-way street. He wants you to know him the way you, the way he knows you. And that can only happen when you fully understand his names and what they mean. So I just release decree and declare as a prophet an encounter with El Shaddai over each one of you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you will encounter El Shaddai, your destroyer, El Shaddai, your protective spirit, El Shaddai, your rainmaker, El Shaddai, your sufficiency, and El Shaddai, who is abundantly. That in this season where we are getting to know the fullness of the Trinity so that we can be prepared to welcome in the weightiness of that glory of the fullness of the Trinity, that you will get to know El Shaddai. You have encountered now Yahweh Sabaoth. You have encountered now Yahweh Cherev. And now it is time to encounter El Shaddai and everything that that name covers and to covenant with him fully and completely in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus. Okay, I hope you are as excited about that as I am. And I'm so keen to hear your testimonies of your encounters with El Shaddai. And I'm so excited that our latter reigns are indeed going to be greater than our former reigns, no matter what it looks like in the natural. It's what it looks like in the face of El Shaddai that matters. So bless you. Love you. I shall see you on Friday morning at 7 a.m. just before I fly to Durban. Have a wonderful Wednesday filled with wisdom.